Good morning, everyone. My name is Julie. I am the owner and founder of Lady Fault Eye. You're either watching this on my Facebook page or my YouTube channel, which are both called Lady Fault Eye. Uh, they used to be different, um, but I just recently changed them. So um, the Facebook page and the YouTube channel actually match my business card. <laughs> So everything is nice and coherent. Um, today we are here to talk a little bit about the violet flame. Um, I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about working with our crown chakra and realized that um, some people may not be aware of what the violet flame is. But before we get started, I'm going to just smudge a little bit. We're not opening any circles or anything like that, but um, it's always a good idea to smudge. I, I've never um, said it's a bad idea to smudge, don't smudge. <laughs> um, and I probably don't even smudge as much as I should. Um, going old school with some matches here because for some reason, like, Every single lighter I have in the house is like dyed all at the same time, and apparently my sage doesn't want to go either. So, trying to. I had a sage bundle that wouldn't burn. Basically what happened, it was um, so tight that it just wouldn't burn. Um, so what I did was um, I took it apart and now I have all these pieces and um, I didn't want to waste it. So here I have all these pieces now. I just I couldn't get it to burn at all but now I have all these pieces that I can use don't like to waste so real quick before we get started too is next week um, I will be live Monday um, it'll be a little bit later than normal I think I put it for like nine instead of seven I'm on vacation um, so I don't need to be up and out the door for work. So I put that one for a little earlier for Monday morning. And there won't be one for next Thursday. Um, like I said, I'm on vacation. So, But I, I still wanted to do the weekly forecasts. I think those are really important. Um, and I think, you, you know, if even just one person gets something out of it and helps their week a little bit, then it's worth it for me to make the video. So I want to still do that. Coming back after that, it's going to be September. And it's like, holy cow. Um, I, I don't know. I'm If you can't tell, I am freezing this morning. <laughs> I got up and thankfully my husband um, closed all the windows this morning before I got up. He gets up and goes to work for me, which is another reason why I come live in the mornings and not at evening. Um, because it's very hard with my husband home to um, not be distracted. Not that he, he doesn't do anything, but I get very easily distracted. And when he's outside or moving around and things, it's I, I get squirrel brain. So um, in the mornings, he's not here, so I don't have that problem. Um, but anyway, um, when we come back, it's going to be September. Yeah. So we have one more chakra to go over. Um, and then uh, after that, you're like, well, we still have October, November, and December, and, and no more chakras to go over. But I really think that is um, kind of perfect because uh, those are our really busy time, and it's our holiday time. And um, I haven't really done much for crafting with you guys over um the summer and so i'm once we get the other um chakra wrapped up i'm really hoping to um do some crafting with you you know um i was already thinking this morning of different crafts we could do and things that um 
we could come up with. So I was thinking maybe for, um, you know, Samhain, we could do a, a candle or an ancestral picture frame. So I've already got ideas coming in of some different crafting things that we can do. So um, I know a lot of you really like the crafting um, more so than <laughs> watching me just talk. Um, I don't blame you. I like the crafting ones too. Um, that's why I added them in there. Um, but we haven't done much of them over the summer uh, just because summers are so busy and we're getting, we're talking about the chakras and stuff. But anyway, um, if I wasn't on vacation next week, we probably would have been doing a craft. <laughs> but um, it's going to be just uh, a lot to take stuff. We're going in the camper and I don't really have my video set up and I don't have my supplies and so it's just going to be it's going to be too hard so we're just going to skip a week um and uh so anyway like I said before we were talking two weeks ago um I think about the fundamentals of the crown chakra and I mentioned um one of the things you could do is work with the violet flame. And like I said, I realized that some people may not know what the violet flame is. So I'm going to go over it with you. Um, the violet flame, it, it's not anything too complicated. Um, probably won't even really take me an hour to tell you about it. But <laughs> um, it's real simple. So, um, what it is, is like, I don't even know the best place to start here. Um, like it's not that complicated, <laughs> but, um, so let me just start with what I wrote down in my notes. Um, enlightened people have been working with the violet flame for, um, throughout time like before we can even like remember or track or any of those things. Um, so different um, saints, shamans, um, sages, um, all different kinds of practices, anything that practice is, practices is, <laughs> anyone that practices the sacred arts um, has most likely worked with the violet flame. So it's not new. Um, it's not something that was just invented. Um, it's not something that um, us weirdo people invented. Um, it's not hoodoo voodoo. <laughs> it's not anything like that. It's It's been around for a really, really long time. Um, and so it really surprises me still when people don't know it. But, you know, if you if you're if you're not in the metaphysical, world if you're if you don't learn about this and and nobody's teaching you then you know why would you learn why would you know that right um just like anything else but i think so many of these things um should be taught to us and they're just not um and i think that's kind of sad um because like i said they have been around forever it's not new it, it's not a modern concept um so, uh, just a little bit of history, uh, um, sorry if you're not history people, but um, St. Germain um, was a master alchemist. Um, he was in the 18th century, from the 18th century, in the 18th century, from the 18th century. He lived during the 18th century. Um, and he believed that light was the, the key to um, all alchemy. Um, the alchemical key is what I wrote down and alchemical key, um, alchemical, I was like, well, that's kind of a weird word, right? So like, what if not everybody knows what that means? Because I'm not even really, I wasn't even really sure that I knew what it meant. <laughs> so I looked it up and, um, to make sure I was using it correctly. Um, and it is, um, tr it, the, the definition of it is transmuting or transforming. And so I, I think that's very fitting um, for what we're talking about. Um, so 
the transforming or transmuting um, that the violet flame does is it um, turns negativity into, um, I wrote divinity, but it's basically negative into positive, right? Um, so your lower self to your higher self, um, you know, low energies to high energies, um, you get the basic idea. So that was back in the 18th century. Um, again, a little more history. Um, Nikola Tesla worked with it as well. Um, and I'm sure you guys realize that he's not quite so modern. Um, <laughs> maybe more modern than some of the other ones. Um, but uh, he's definitely not, you know, this, like I'm saying, I'm just trying to give an example that these have been around forever. And these have been worked with um, by people who um, work in, you know, these fields. Um, and so, and they're like the top of their fields and they, they're working with the violet flame. So that's basically just what I'm trying to get at here is um, that it's important. <laughs> um, Nikola Tesla worked with the violet flame. Um, he studied it. Um, he used it in a lot of his healings that he did. And he did perform um, some, some healings on people. So not going to get into the particulars or anything um but basically like i said just letting you know that it's been around for a while and um, it's been used by people um that are well known in their fields all right so uh let's see where are we going from here um we talked about uh, like i said the crown chakra which is right here um, it's basically where your soft spot was. Um, so that is your crown chakra. Um, as we grow up and our skull grows, um, that soft spot closes up. It goes away. Um, but that's where your crown chakra is located, if you want to know the exact. But basically, the, the, top, of your, the top of your head is fine. Um, if you're working with... Um, A violet stone and you don't get it right in the exact place because that's kind of hard to meditate especially when you're supposed to keep your spine straight when you meditate <laughs> so you can kind of put it you know on the, the flatter part of your head it's not going to be that big of a, a deal but anyway crown chakra right here crown chakra and all the stones that are related to your crown chakra are all purple, violet. And again, my camera is set on a kind of a warm tone, so you're really not um, seeing the colors of the stones in their true, because I can tell by looking at the camera and here, this is much more purple, and this is much more purple than what you're seeing, but it's because you just have to trust me on it. <laughs> Trust me that they're purpley violet. Um, and our crown chakra is um, associated with our spiritual energy. So whatever that looks like for you. Again, um, I'm not here to convert or change anybody um, from their religion to my religion or anything like that. Um, your crown chakra can be to connect you to um, your higher self. Um, to spirit guides, to ancestral guides, to um, angels, to um, God, um, gods and goddesses, deities, whatever you choose. Um, like I said, I'm not here to tell you one thing is right or one thing is wrong. Um, I believe we all have faith come to us how we need it to. So... Um, whether your God uh, appears to you as Jesus Christ or Ganesha or Buddha, <clears throat> um, I believe the source comes to us how we, we best need it. Not everybody probably buys into that theory, but um, that is my theory. <laughs> um, so anyway, <clears throat> crown chakra, 
the color is purple that that is our crown chakra and, and grab my book here if I can real quick so you can see right here top of your head and it's kind of it's a purpley color put everything back some days I'm a neat freak sometimes I'm not <laughs> um, so it connects us to the divine, whatever that is, the source, the divine, whatever you um, want to use for a word, because I think it's all the same thing. Um, and violet is the highest frequency in the visible spectrum. So anything higher frequency than violet, we can't see it. So that's how high of a frequency violet is. Um, so the violet flame um, emerges from the violet ray. Um, and where does the violet ray come from? Well, I don't know if I really have an answer for you for that, but it's the energy that is out there. Again, that is um, at such a high frequency um, that we can't see it with the visible eye. But it's there and so we tap into that by um, using the violet flame um, so let's see here just making sure I didn't, I didn't touch base real quick, quick but um, our crown chakra is um, I just wrote down infinite compassion and peace so when we're tapped into our ground chakra, um, we are full of compassion and peace. And so by calling in the violet flame, you again are calling in that same type of energy. Um, so, and again, it's transmuting and transforming. So, um, you know, um, you can work with the violet flame. You could be in a very peaceful state <coughs> and choose to work with the violet flame um but i think a good another good way to use the violet flame in or work with the violet flame is actually when your vibration is is a little low um and um calling in that um energy to transmute it so when we're feeling negative when we're feeling angry lonely depressed um all those lower frequency vibrations that's a really good time to maybe say like I'm gonna do a quick meditation or visual visualization um, and work with the violet flame to help you um, transmute that um, so the violet flame um, basically like I said is mercy um, forgiveness freedom love justice it's all the higher frequency um, emotions. And so like I said, you can you could certainly be in a very calm um, place and a loving place and still work with the violet flame because I don't think you can ever call in too much love or too much compassion or too much um, freedom or too much justice. I don't think that's like a thing. Um, but um, for me, when I'm like, struggling and I'm down at the lower frequencies um, for me I don't struggle with um, depression or loneliness um, really um, more of my mind is um, anger um, and you know stuff with my um, sacral and uh, my Chiron so the not being good enough um, things like that so when I'm in those places um, you know, for me, that's a good time to be like, okay, let's do some, some work here with the violet flame. Um, so basically that's what I just said through the violet flame, we can transmute negative thoughts, emotions, and energies. Um, so <clears throat> I do tend to have some negative thoughts about some people once in a while. And I try to, um, when that happens, I try to immediately stop that. Um, because a couple of reasons 
is I really think what we put out in the universe um, is out in the universe. <laughs> so, um, and I don't want to wish harm on anyone. Um, sometimes when I'm angry, I do. <clears throat> but I really don't want to. At my core being, I don't really want harm to, to become anyone. Um, also, we have to remember that there's karmic debt. So, um, you know, if we're putting that kind of stuff out into the universe, um, we better be prepared that it may come back at us in some, some way, shape, or form. Um, so we don't want to, or I don't want to be worried about karmic debt coming back at me for anything. And, you know, it's just, like I said, it's really at my core. It's not who I am. Um, I get angry quickly and, um, I go from like zero to a hundred, uh, for my scale of anger. Um, and when I get in that angry place, I get very, um, aggressive. I get very bold. Um, and, um, I, I have been told by quite a few people that I'm, I'm pretty scary. <laughs> um, and I'm really not a scary person. Um, I wouldn't harm anybody, um, anything like that. But, you know, if you see me angry, um, I guess I'm kind of like the Hulk. I go from nice little normal guy to big, scary green guy pretty quickly here. So those are times when we want to work with the violet flame or it's when I, you know, really want to work with the violet flame. Like, I guess just basically saying like when I'm in a happy place, and I'm in a loving, kind place, I don't really, you know, um, tend to think about it too much, I guess. Um, so, you know, because it's, I'm in a good place, so I don't really think about it too much. But I have been guided to be better at my meditation. It keeps coming up for me, and I've been ignoring it. So I've got to get some some daily practice routine stuff going in there for for my meditation so maybe i will work a little bit more with the violet flame but i did put up um in the event um if you're watching it on facebook there was an event made for for this video and in the event there is a um, guided meditation um for the violet flame so i do like that one i've used it a couple of times i actually play it in my earbuds when i'm sleeping um, so my conscious mind is really not participating, but it, it is in my ear, um, playing at night. Um, when I sleep, I wear earbuds because my husband snores. I play guided meditations. I play the Silvegios. Um, I play mantras, um, all kinds of things in my earbuds when I sleep. I'm like, why not use that? Right. I have to have something in my ears because my husband snores and I can't sleep. And why not utilize um, the Silvelgios and um, mantras and all of those things because it just makes sense to me, I guess. But um, back to the violet flame. Sorry, sometimes that happens for me. Um, so through the violet flame, we transmute um, negative thoughts, negative emotions, and negative energies. Um, so this, again, is really going to help anybody who is really struggling with those lower, um, lower frequency energies. Like I said, um, I'm fairly lucky in as far as the, I don't suffer from a lot of depression or loneliness, um, fear. Um, I just got one anger and I got it full force. <laughs> um, but those other, a lot of those other lower frequency um, emotions, I, I don't really um, suffer from too much. But if I did, those would be, again, things that we would want to use the violet flame for. Um, the violet flame, um, I think of it as an extension of our crown chakra. Um, so if I was doing a visualization, it kind of looks like the picture again that I put um, on the event. I don't know if I can pull it up here on my phone. Um, talk 
אומר כמה פר זמן. So it kind of that's kind of how that's kind of how I envision it, um, but a little bit higher up. I don't really envision it actually touching my head. Um, not to say that that's right or wrong, but um, when I do visualizations, that's not quite how it looks to me, but pretty close. Um, I actually do see it as flame and not a light. That's kind of just like a beacon of light kind of image. I do see it as actual flames. Um, and I see it, you know, probably a couple inches above my head. And you get, so you can see that. So it's like really not touching my head. It's right above my crown chakra. Um, and um, I do vision it as actual flames um, and purple. Again, it's really, um, there's no right or wrong way to do it. If you if you vision the, perp, um, the violet flame as more of like the violet rays, um, that's still going to work for you. It's not like, oh, you did it wrong. Forget it. That you did it all wrong. It's not going to work. Um, that's really not a thing, <laughs> at least in my opinion. There will be people who will tell you, you need to do step A, B, C, and D. And if you don't do all of them right and you don't do all of them in order, it's not going to work for you. And I'm a big believer of <laughs> on that. Okay. <laughs> um, if you're putting in the work and you're putting in the time, um, it doesn't really matter if you skip a step here or there, and it doesn't really matter um, if you do them, do things out of order or in a different order. Do what feels right to you. Do what your intuition um, calls to you. And because um, I'm big, I'm a big believer. Like follow your own intuition. <coughs> you may be guided to do something a little different than than I do. And I'm not going to, again, tell you that you're wrong or that it's not going to work if you do it that way. I believe if you're putting in the work and you're putting in the effort, um, you're going to see results. So don't get caught up in um, you have to do this and you have to do this and you have to do this. Um, if you're going to meditate, um, I don't open a circle to meditate. Some people do. Um, when I'm meditating, I, I'm i not necessarily calling in energies, in my opinion. Um, if I'm doing a visual, visualization or meditating, I'm not really calling in anybody to be there with me. Um, if you're doing that, then to me, that's more of a journey than a meditation or a visualization. It's more of um, a journey. And... So to me, that's a little bit different, but I don't open a circle. Um, but if you want to, um, you certainly can, like I said, no right or wrong way. And um, nobody's ever going to, or I'm not going to, I shouldn't say nobody, but I'm not going to ever tell you, no, don't open a circle. Um, if you feel called to open a circle before you meditate or visualize, do any visualization techniques, Go ahead and open a circle if it makes you feel better. If that's where your intuition is leading you, then go ahead and do that. Just remember to close it after. <laughs> um, people tend to open them and then do whatever they're going to do and then um, forget to close them. So, you know, if you're going to open it, just remember to close it. Um, so the violet flame um, is very similar to um, our crystals. So again, it has this very, very high frequency energy um, that um, is like, uh, I'd say up here, but you can't see my hand. So I'm going to say here. <laughs> and those lower emotions that we feel, um, their energy is more down here, right? 
And so when we work with this energy, it helps bring our energy level up. We may not go up to here, um, but it's going to help get us out of down here. So it's going to help bring us bring us up into a happier, peacefuler, um, more loving space energy. Okay, just like our we've talked about the crystals. I'll just grab one. It's not a violet one, but we've talked about crystals and um, their vibration. And each crystal has a vibration. All matter, um, I think I said that earlier. Maybe I didn't. But um, everything, matter, emotions, energies, all have a, an energetic frequency an energetic um, vibration. And when we work with our crystals, it helps bring us to this vibration. So when we're working with, I'll go, I'll go back to the purple, just because it's the violet one. So when we're working with our amethyst and we're working on our crown chakra and we're working on connecting to source, if our chakra is overactive, so it's way up here, and say this is balanced, middle is balanced where the crystal is, it's going to help bring us down to here. If our crown chakra is blocked or underactive, it's going to help bring us up to here. So whatever frequency we are at, whether it's too high or too low, the crystal is going to help us bring it to where it needs to be to balance. Okay, so the violet flame is the same concept. The, the energy frequency is extremely high. I don't think it's going to bring you to a um, energy frequency that is too high for you. Um, Again, I vision it kind of like if we're down here, so if I'm in an angry state, I'm down here, and the, and the violet flame is above my head right here, right? Working with it is going to help bring me probably up to here. It's not going to skyrocket me up into um, a divine state, <laughs> at least not in my opinion. Um, Maybe if you meditated long enough, it might, um, but that has never happened for me. But it does help bring me from down here to more of a here, to more of a happier, peaceful space. So it works the same way. The energy in the frequency is helping bring us up to a happier frequency. So, oh, there's my note right there. It's way down at the bottom. All matter, mind, spirit, all equal vibration. Some sort of energy vibration. If it exists, it has a vibration. And I know a lot of people will, will you know, look at crystals and go, crystals don't work. There's, not, there's nothing there for crystals to do. But it's scientific, people. I'm not a scientific person. I'm not... Um, I can't explain things to you in a scientific way, but I can tell you, um, like I said, when we smudge, it's scientifically proven that smudging helps get rid of negative, negative energy. There's a whole thing and I kind of memorized it, but basically what happens is the smoke from the smudge, from the sage, transmutes positive eons, which cause negative energy, into negative eons, which causes positive energy. I think I said that right. That's scientifically proven. So smudging um, may be woo-woo for some people, but it is scientifically proven <coughs> to clear out negative energies in a space. It's also antibacterial. Um, so, you know, like perfect, right? <laughs> so if you're getting a cold, um, 
or you feel something coming on, you can smudge for that as well. I think of colds and viruses as negative energy. <laughs> that might not be fair, but that's the way I look at it. I'm like, that's negative. I don't want that. Get rid of it. Um, so there are science things involved here. Um, like I said, I'm not a scientific person. I'm not going to be able to explain it to you in terms of science or whatnot. Um, but it is scientific that anything that exists has a, a vibration, an energetic vibration. And so when you work with these things, it helps balance out your energetic vibration. Us as human beings, our energetic vibration is one thing that like can can change constantly, right? So we could be in a very low energetic state and very quickly go to a very high energetic state or the other way around. For me, like I'll go to work and I'm like, it's going to be a good day. This is going to be great. We're going to get through the day just fine. And 10 minutes in, I'm like trying not to throat punch somebody because karmic, I don't want the karmic debt. <laughs> <coughs> and I don't physically really want to hurt people. But sometimes I could. Um, <laughs> anyhow, so our energetic being can change very quickly. And by using these techniques, these visualizations, these meditations, our crystals um, are all ways of helping us maintain a nice, balanced, energy the other thing is color you know the the colors are associated for a reason and again i'm not all scientific -y and i'm not going to kind of go into why all the colors are where they are and how they work and who came up with that and i'm it's there and i trust it and i guess that's all i really need to know about that um if you want to dig into it Go ahead, there's a rabbit hole for you to jump in. Um, but if you are struggling with some of those lower energies, you can just wear the colors of the higher energy. Um, and that would be, one of them would obviously be the purple, the violet colors, um, the amethyst colors. So working with the crystals, um, but even so, if you don't have a bunch of crystals, you don't necessarily need to go out and buy a bunch of crystals. If you've got a really pretty purple shirt and you have a day that you know is going to be a little hard, go ahead and wear your purple shirt. And it's going to help. Wear purple fingernail polish. Um, buy a purple pen. Uh, there's like all kinds of ways that you can work with the energy. I don't know, wear purple eyeshadow. Um, I don't tend to wear purple eyeshadow. and But, um, you know, use a purple pen. If you're having kind of a bad day or a low day, um, use a purple pen. Um, like I said, I don't have anything in no polish on. I took it off last night because it was all chipped and cracked. But um, you could work with purple fingernail polish. <coughs> There's other ways you can work with the colors besides just the crystals um, or just besides like wearing a purple top. You could do your hair purple. I, I think I'm trying to get my hair silver. I'm not sure yet. My hair was black for a long, long time. And this is what is at the ends um, this, that has not washed out. This underneath is my natural color, <laughs> which is basically like no color. But anyway, it was blue for a long time because um, I'm working on my throat chakra and, and I'm very drawn to the blue. So I did have my hair blue for a long time, but I think I'm, I think I'm done with that for right now. But you could put your, you can, your hair could be purple. There's lots of fun ways you could work with all the different colors and the energies. 
um, be creative. So, um, purple lipstick. I do have a purple lipstick. It's a very, very dark purple, more more leaning towards the, the burgundy kind of side, but it is it is a purple. <laughs> um, I think I've actually worn it here for a couple of videos. So, um, yeah, so um, real quick recap of the Violet Flame is it, it is a Violet Flame that is um, connected to the Violet Ray, which connects you to your crown chakra, which connects to the divine, to source, um, to whatever um, God, goddess, deity that you choose or that chooses you, I guess is another way to say it. Um, it is to help raise your energetic vibration um, from lower places to higher places. Um, like I said, I work with it um, when I'm angry. It's a good time for me to work with it. But you can work with it um, if you're not necessarily in a low energetic place. Um, you can work with it just to help connect to your um to your divine, to your source, to your God, to your goddess, uh, source, Gaia, whatever <clears throat> you want to connect to, ancestral beings, um, spirit guides, your higher self, um, <laughs> I could go on angels, whatever it is. So even if you're not necessarily in a low energetic place and you want to work with that energy, you certainly can. <coughs> Um, but again, um, a lot of people work with it because it does help bring them out of those, those lower energetic, um, places into a more balanced energetic place. So again, um, you can use visualizations, you can use meditation. Um, like I said, I do have on the event page. A shared guided meditation um, that you could work with. You could work with your stones. Um, so the primary stone would be amethyst. Um, amethyst is a perfect stone for crown chakra and violet flame work. It's generally inexpensive. Like I got this piece um, for like nine dollars, and that's a nice big piece. Um, so. But you don't need a, a giant piece, but um, I found it was just a really good, um, it looked cool. That's why I bought it, honestly, is because I just thought it was really cool looking. Um, but I really found it was um, a good um, fit for my hand, I guess, basically, is what you want to, what I want to say. It was really good to hold it and meditate with it. Um, so you can work with your crystals. And you can work with the color in general. So again, and be creative. Um, I'm not a headband or ribbon kind of person or anything, but you could, you know, work with purple that way. You could color your hair purple. You could wear purple lipstick, purple eyeshadow, purple clothes, um, paint your fingernails purple, um, paint your room purple. Um, if you have a sacred space that you could paint purple, that would be pretty cool. Um, like I said, even just, um, you know, if you're at work and buy yourself a purple pen and write in purple so you got purple that way. So, all right, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I, I didn't think this was going to quite take a whole, whole hour to talk about the Violet Flame. It's really not a hard concept. It's not difficult. There's not um, a lot to it. <laughs> um, but... I, you know, when I talk about things, I, I really try hard to make sure everybody understands what I'm talking about. Not that I think anybody is stupid or anything like that, but if you've never heard these terms before and I'm using them and you're like, I don't know what she just said. <coughs> I've been there, right? I've been watching videos from somebody, um, and they're talking away about something and they're like, oh, and you could work with this. And they say something and I'm like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> and I have to Google. I have to start Googling. Um, 
So I try to make it that if, if I'm referencing something for you to work with or um, to try, um, that you know what it is and you know what it's about. So that's my uh, little thing there about the Violet Flynn. And like I said, I'll see you guys Monday. Um, I think I put it for 9 o'clock, but I can't quite remember off the top of my head right now. But I'm pretty sure I put it for 9 o'clock. Um, I'm going to come to you from my camper and on my phone. So, because um, I'm not taking my whole lap, my whole computer and desk and lighting and all that with me camping. <laughs> um, so I will just be on my phone uh, for Monday. And then Thursday we won't have a video. And then when we come back, it'll be September. And it's like, oh my gosh, September is crazy, right? So September is our our gateway into our uh, holiday season, I guess. And when we come back in September, let me see here. We're going to be working on our last chakra. Number nine is our soul star chakra. So we will be talking about the fundamentals of it, and then we'll be talking about the tools of it, and then that's going to finish up the book for us. So like I said, I, I think um, that that's a really good timing to finish up the chakras in September, and then um, that leaves us October, November, and December to do um, some more crafting stuff. So, um, I'm going to try to be a little bit better too with sharing some of last year's videos. Um, so, um, like I said, I, I have videos about Maybaum and uh, Samhain and Yule and all those things. So I don't want to do, um, I don't want to do them again. Um, there's no, no big sense in, um, redoing those videos, but I am going to try to share them reshare them back up on the page um i i think by telling you guys that they're there um some of you will go find them but um i think if um if i place them in the page at the appropriate times um and they're there for people to just click on um that that may happen if i make it a little easier for you guys to find some of those videos so um I'm going to try to do that and, and, and get those back up in there for you so that you can easily find them and not have to go searching for them. Because if you're like me, I'm like, I'll look for that later, and then I don't. <laughs> I get busy, and I just don't. I have, like, so many videos saved on YouTube, on my phone, um, books to read. Um, sometimes I just forget to go back to things, so... If it's right there, I can click on it and I can watch it. Um, that works for me. So um, if I can help make it a little easier for somebody else, I will try to do the same. So, all right. So I hope everybody has a really good weekend. Um, and as always, remember to be kind. Your kindness is going to change your day. It, it's going to help bring that, that vibration, that frequency, um, that energetic level up for you. Um, it's scientific proven um, that that will happen, um, but it's also going to help improve somebody else's day. And really, it could potentially change someone else's life. And it doesn't cost us anything to to be nice. I know it's really hard sometimes. Um, and I know, like for me personally right now, I'm struggling. Um, people at work are really, really pushing my buttons. And so when I leave work, sometimes it's hard to remember that the people in the outside world are not the people that upset me and that I, I should still be nice to them. <laughs> so, um, I know it's hard, uh, real life happens. And, um, and you know, if you are happen to not be so nice to somebody, then to my advice to you is, is be super nice today <laughs> to try to balance that out. So anyway, 
Have a good weekend. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. And I will see you guys all Monday morning. Bye.